Hey, good morning or afternoon or evening or whatever. I'm uh, Chase Cunningham, Dr. Cunningham, Dr. Zero Trust as well. Uh, too many doctors in there. Anyway, I'm reporting here for Cybersecurity HQ. we got some stuff to cover this week, so let's get into the world of deepfakes first. There's an article in CNN.com which talks about a deepfake election scam that is pretty new to the market and kind of disturbing. AI resurrects long-dead dictator in murky new era of deepfake electioneering. Uh, yeah, a once feared army general who ruled Indonesia with an iron fist for more than three decades has a message for voters ahead of upcoming elections from beyond the grave. Uh, I am Suharto, the second president of Indonesia, the former general says in a three minute video that's racked up more than 4.7 million views on X and spread at TikTok, Facebook and YouTube. <laughs> yeah, so basically a dead dictator has been brought back to life and deep faked and it's had nearly five million people looking at it. Do we see that this is problem, uh, calamity ensuing shortly? Ransomware attack forces Colorado public defenders to disable their network. Not good. A cyber attack led the Colorado State Public Defender's Office to shut down its network, the latest in a string of incidents disrupting local court systems. Now, the question we should be asking is why would you attack court systems? If you're trying to cause chaos, a good way to foment chaos is basically to make it where the legal system falls over on itself. Uh, the Office of Colorado State Public Defenders was forced to shut down its computer network on Monday after officials became aware of malware encrypted data within its system. The cybersecurity incident, anytime somebody puts those in there, you know there's a problem. First reported by the Denver Post is the latest in a string of cyber attacks that have impacted local courts. First, it was Pennsylvania, uh, which was hit with DDoS. Now it's Colorado. Then Kansas was also hit as well. Um, months long outages, et cetera, et cetera. So as a result, public defenders charged with defending those who cannot afford private counsel have been unable to access case information, prompting mass requests for postponements, which is going to impact the caseload. So there you have it. Insurance provider for public servants abroad detects, quote, cybersecurity incident. Remember, anytime you hear those words, cybersecurity incident, something went wrong. Uh, this is in cbc.ca. MSH International Canada says it's not known what information, if any, was accessed. Uh-oh, so that's not good. The insurance provider for members of the public service health care plan who were posted abroad or traveling says it recently detected cybersecurity incident involving its systems, but hasn't determined what information would have been accessed. Start the clock. You'll hear more about it guaranteed. Uh, MSH International Canada said it detected the incident on February 9th and immediately paused services. Law enforcement was notified and thorough investigations underway. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you're a customer of theirs, may the force be with you. Um, yeah, insurance company got hit. Super. Uh, this article is in VOA, VOA news.com. Cyber attacks spike suddenly prior to Taiwan's election. So I've said for a long time that cyber is the bridge between espionage and kinetic warfare. Here you're seeing more of it. This is what we should kind of expect some version of in the United States in the coming months. Chinese linked cyber actors appear to have made a massive last minute push to try to derail Taiwan's recent elections through the precise goals Though the precise goals of the sudden campaign and to the extent to which the attack succeeded remain unclear, a new report Tuesday by the U.S.-based cybersecurity firm Trellix found what researchers describe as a significant spike in activity with attacks on Taiwanese organizations more than doubling in the 24-hour period before Taiwan's January 13th election. Malicious cyber activity rose from 1,758 detections on January 11th to 4,300 the next day. Most of the attacks focused on government offices, police departments, and financial institutions, with the attackers mainly uh, trying to target internal communications, police reports, bank statements, and insurance information. The pattern of the attack is unusual, so this was kind of a spray and pray type of thing, hoping to cause social chaos and disarray during an election, which sounds eerily familiar. Sounds like something that maybe we're dealing with and coming for us. So there's more proof of what's going on there. Uh, security report AI cybersecurity market pro projected to exceed $133 billion. That's a pretty large TAM. A report by Techopedia has provided insights on the influence of AI in the cybersecurity market. Key findings of the report include the projected value of the AI cybersecurity market, expenses and savings associated with AI. And it looks like it's about a total of $133 billion from 2023 to 2030. So if you got money to invest, Go invest it in some company that has AI, cyber, something or another, because whether or not it's real, it's going to grow. Um, looks like that market's going to be the next super hot one. Matter of fact, if you're going to be at RSA this year, I bet 
every other booth is going to have AI something on it. Uh, and this is for those folks that like to do looking around and try and figure things out, kind of like I do, cybersecuritynews.com, any, A-N-Y dot R-U-N, any dot run, threat intelligence lookup tool, a repository of millions of malware IOCs. This is actually pretty slick. Malware sandbox leader, any run, introduced a threat intelligence lookup platform to help security researchers find the relevant threat data from the sandbox tasks of any run. The platform aids in identifying and studying various types of malware by improving the incident response and overall cybersecurity measures. Debatable, but you can do your research. In a controlled environment, any run allows security analysts to execute and analyze suspicious files and URLs safely. Uh, threat intelligence lookup. Check millions of IOCs from the database for threat intelligence with the help of the lookup. Uh, it enables the analysis of files. Um, API integrations available benefit from lots of different hooks, whatever. It uh, doesn't say whether or not this is necessarily open source, but I will be the first one to go jump through the hoop and see if I can figure out if it is free and available and open source because this type of stuff is super fun to me. Um, matter of fact, let's just click quickly here and see what they give us. Hopefully this is not behind a paywall because that would suck. Okay, there's a 14-day free trial. Eh. Um, but looks like... Uh, Looks like it is something that you would pay for, I believe. Yeah, so, okay, not all bad, but still, it would be cooler if they had an open source version. Just saying. So, you know, any run, if you're out there and you're listening to this, um, you've got some valuable information, valuable data, maybe come up with an open source version. Anyway, uh, six minutes, seven minutes, whatever. As always, stay smart. Stay safe, stay secure, pay attention to what's going on, look for weird things because we are in election year, expect increased attacks. I'm Dr. Chase Cunningham. I'll catch you on the next one.